Okay. Itamix Kanatani. Good morning. It is Sunday, October 27th, 2019. In the opening of the lunar cycle, Itotstui, when cold arrives, our first of seven winter lunar cycles in the Blackfoot winter. So this is day one coming into winter, and I believe this is what Halloween would have marked, right? On the on, on, in the European indigenous traditions, um, Halloween, I think, was the start of the winter, the new lunar cycle, the first, the first, you know, new moon going into the winter. And uh, just got fixed in the Gregorian calendar to October 31st, but October used to be a moon. <laughs> so things would have moved around. Anyway, just out for my usual Sunday morning walk and uh, not so much talking today because I didn't have any students with me, but walking and observing. And it's nice when I have a, a morning like this where I get a chance to, to go it alone out here at Spobik and me because often I have somebody with me and I find that the learning dynamics are quite different, you know, if you're carrying on conversation, then if you're uh, just focused in around you and what's going on. Um, so you get a different learning experience if you're out here by yourself compared to when you're partnered or when you're with a group. I find I find it really productive being alone or being with a, with a partner that's engaged in what's going on out here. Um, because you can see with, with you know more eyes with a partner, but once you get a group going, I don't know, things, things seem to change and I don't, I don't seem to be focused in on what's going on, um, except at this at very broad general levels. Any case, I had some thoughts as I was walking ar around and I want to share this with the phonology students. Um, looks like we're gonna have six or seven new participants in the phenological studies this winter, uh, my private Facebook group. And so I'm looking forward to seeing lots of new like field notes and, and uh, everybody's learning experiences, seeing photos and this kind of thing and having questions to answer. And I think it's just gonna be a fun, um, fun time working together. And uh, I think I explained in the orientational video that basically what what I do is I come out here a couple of times a week and spend a couple hours at a time and um, just getting to know the place better and better and better as time goes on. Um, and one of the first tenets of that learning experience is um, you need to you need to get to know all the players, right? If you're going to learn from a place, you, you need to know the players. And step one in that is learning names. So there's a huge, huge, you know, learning curve in the first year or two of phenological studies as you're acquiring all these identity tags, right? You see, you see a plant or an animal, you take note of it, you don't know who it is. You know, you're out, you're out here asking that question, who are you? And if you don't know who they are, you need to take note of that. And then uh, you're gonna have to use reference guides, um, field guides, or, you know, bouncing the photos off of um, different online groups, including our phenology group, uh, to, to find out you know, to learn the identities of different plants and animals. And, and you're gonna learn a lot in the first year or two of doing that. Um, you're gonna learn hundreds of identities and you're gonna see the world completely differently because of it. However, there do seem to be some plants and animals out here that we pick up on and are able to associate with identities easier than others. I think size has part to do with that, you know, because we're pretty big animals 
and I think that you know we see um, the the larger organisms more readily than we do the smaller ones, uh, and we notice their their distinct markers more easily than we do on the smaller ones. And so you know there's something there's something in the way that we learn that you know maybe. Uh, one bird has a, a bright red head and so we're gonna very easily be able to figure out who that bird is compared to this drab colored little bird the same size right um, so there's some of that that goes on you're gonna hit a wall eventually I did where you're comfortable after maybe the first year year and a half two years you're comfortable uh, with your with your knowledge where you're walking around you're seeing lots right and you've got lots to pay attention to you've got lots of stories to follow just in the in the in the characters that you know but you are also aware that there's still others like for me i'm aware that there are grass species out here um several different grass species uh there's still lots of insects who i don't know there's other plants that i don't know out here small plants um lichens mosses these kind of things once you start getting to that level you know which you don't need to be at right away <laughs> but once you start getting to that level it's it, there's really a it's it gets difficult right um because these organisms are not easily identified even with field guides and uh we have to train our eyes to look differently to to recognize the the markers that we can use for identity for them um and it's 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 arduous but i think it still needs to be done um and so as part of my studies this winter going into this winter i think i'm gonna try try something new that i haven't done before so i can pick up some more identities um that i've just been too relaxed in in ignoring you know um, like this morning as I was walking around, I noticed there's this, there's this small little plant. Uh, its leaves are turning gold because of the cold. And um, I know I've seen that plant many times along the levee on the southwest side of the pond. And for one reason or another, I've always kind of brushed, brushed it off as uh, it must be kind of a sprouting bed of alfalfa or something. Uh, but, those, but those larger plants never emerged, right? And, you know, even today looking at it, I'm like, it's just a bed of sprouts, but it's a little, you know, it's a, it's a round leaf. And I think if it was a, a sprout, um, there would be kind of a round leaf or broad leaf plant that, that came out of it. Maybe something like Canada goldenrod or something might pop up there, but I've never actually seen a bunch of plants other than the grasses. I've never seen any such plants emerging from that part of the of the levee so i think all these years it's just been a small ground covering plant that i've been looking at there um but because it's so small and indistinct and maybe its flowers are just tiny and indistinct you know and hardly visible who knows um uh, i've never learned that plant right i've never learned it i've never learned its identity and um it's an easy one to just kind of brush off and just pretend like it's not there right and i've got those kind of situations all over my study site you know um small organisms that i need to i need to learn so i think one of the ways that i'm going to approach that this season is i'm going to actually start making a list um the, the the organisms both the species both at spobikimi here where i've done most of my studies and at the Alexander Wilderness Park, which is my new study site. Um, make lists. Now, the thing with lists, though, is that they can be double-edged swords, right? Because I know a lot of naturalists and birders and such who their their lists are just their life. You know, they're... <laughs> um, when they go outside, they are looking to... Um, see a representative of a certain species and check it off of their list right um and that's that's all they that's all they they and they you know they're happy with that just seeing them to me that's like 
only the initial like handshake in a visit, right? You need to ask them what's new. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so one of the drawbacks to lists is that you can just get, you know, all your, all your learning is identity and that's it. Um, on the other hand, a, a list can, I think, be of, of benefit because, you know, you're going to want to fill, fill out that whole thing. You're going to want to have, you're going to want to be inclusive. So you're not going to overlook the drab colored bird. You're going to finally have to pin an identity to it. And what if you can't pin an identity to it? What if you haven't found anybody to help you um, identify it, give it a name, common name, scientific name, Blackfoot name, whatever? Um, what do you do in that situation? Because I'm, I have that situation in, uh, in several several of the, the plants, at least, out here at Shpobik in me. Um, I've, I've tried to look them up before and I've just been unsuccessful. I think what I'm going to, what I'm going to start trying to do in that regard, again, to boost my, my learning is I'm going to tag it with a nickname, a placeholder at least, so that I have a, I have a nickname and then I can continue trying to search for its actual identity, but at least I have a name to associate with it. Um, and it's going to help me pay more attention to it. So those two things, you know, two little tinkerings that I'm going to do with my study uh, this season. New students or old students in phonology, um, you know, you might might consider whether or not you want to do that yourself, right? Um, the list and the nicknaming, so that. Uh, if you have hit any walls like I have, or you do in your in your studies, um, maybe that'll help you come over those hurdles. I don't know. It's untested yet. I'm going to test it this winter and see how that works. But just an idea that I thought I'd throw out there. <laughs>